It's showtime, folks. Once upon a time, the words, yes, we can, reverberated through every Democrat arena. It was the rise of Barack Obama, who presented himself as the savior. This is getting interesting. This was the moment when we began to provide care for the sick. This was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal. This was the moment, this was the time when we came together to remake this great nation. Yes, so what of it? From his biblical prose to the Greek columns, Democrats were fainting like they were witnessing the second coming. Looks like somebody might have fainted up here. If we got uh, 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 some of the EMS, somebody. Don't worry about it. Folks do this all the time in my meetings. We got somebody who fainted. This is what happens. They'll be OK. Just give them a little room. Everybody bend their knees one time. They just don't lock your knees. What's going on here? The media breathed life into it, Barack. The Messiah. Messianic rhetoric infuses Obama rallies. Can a Messiah win twice? They made Obama sound like he could walk on water and depicted him that way. Photographers put halos on him. To them, Obama was a god. I'm a bit confused. He made so many promises. We thought that he was going to be, I, I shouldn't say this at Christmas time, but the next Messiah. People have always had profound affection for political leaders. It's not scandalous. It's a testament to how strongly devoted bases can be. But it's been almost a decade since Democrats have felt the thrill go up their leg. I want to know where you're going with this. No one ever fainted for Hillary or Biden. They miss it. And they're jealous when the other side has it. The New York Times infiltrated a Trump rally and said they witnessed a religious revival. Show me, show me. Thousands of people have been lining up for hours to get inside, showing the endless devotion that these supporters have for the former president. One of the more striking ways we see this impassioned loyalty from Trump fans is at the end of his rallies, uh, where there's a sudden shift in tone, where it goes from very high energy. Please, continue. Into almost a, a solemn church-like atmosphere where Trump gives a, a 10 to 15 minute sermon, preaching to his crowd, his faithful flock of supporters. What we see are people almost in prayer. The net effect here is Trump has turned the Republican Party into something resembling the Church of Trump. I got the point. Tonight, Primetime's getting an inside look at Biden, Obama, and Clinton's fundraising freak off. Biden hoovered up 26 million bucks last night, gathering New York's richest liberals in just one room. Lizzo warming up the crowd. Radio City Music Hall! We got three presidents in the building tonight. That sounds like a put, put, put party to me. So everybody, clap your hands. After that performance, Lizzo quit singing. More on that later. World-renowned artist Hunter Biden took the stage, flashed a smile at what I'm sure he saw as a room full of potential clients. That's a good one. And then he was seen leaving later with that same red backpack that any 50-year-old man looks questionable carrying. Anyway, back to the main event. Biden, Barry, and Billy finally came out. They were high expectations because people paid hundreds of thousands of dollars per ticket. But Biden didn't have any new material. How is this possible? He just talked about ice cream, sunglasses, and Trump. Can voters trust a presidential candidate who has not won a single Trump International Golf Club trophy? When he came into the Oval, when he was being, before he got sworn in, I said, I'll give you three strokes if you carry your own bag. That's what a half a million dollar ticket gets you. This is weird. Biden's base has no taste to laugh at anything, but they weren't the only ones in the crowd. The far left flank of the Democratic Party infiltrated the event, and they weren't there to laugh. Hey, so do you manage? Why do you say that? There was an insurrection. Shame on you, Joe Biden! Shame on you! Shame on you! You are pushing genocide in Palestine, and no amount of full concern that you do will change the billions that you are doing! You, there's blood on your head! 
Honestly, I don't even know what to say to you. Palestinians are dying right now because of your actions. Palestinians are dying right now because of your actions. Because of what you're doing. Because of the things that you're doing. What's going on here? What were they counting? Now, the night was spoiled four times by protesters. Biden's donors finally got to see what many in their party feel about him. And once the donors stepped out of the venue, they themselves were swarmed by more protesters. It's a classic. Why are they doing this? The Democratic Party is fractured. They are tearing themselves apart. A party divided cannot stand. Sure, Biden raised 26 mil in one night, but having the biggest war chest doesn't guarantee you victory. Hillary doubled Trump's fundraising in 16, but the Bernie bros wanted nothing to do with her, and Trump ran circles around her. Biden's losing young voters, Muslims, minorities. Bubba and Barack, good luck trying to put that coalition back together. I think we need to think this through. Oh, man, if you were in that room, Miller, you would have been screaming at the top of your lungs, too. <laughs> yeah, albeit for different reasons. Uh, and it wouldn't have been out of uh, overwhelming excitement at seeing Lizzo perform. Like, you have to appreciate the fact <laughs> the base of the Democrat Party is in that room. I'm afraid it's true. And who is it? Super rich white people living in Manhattan who have more servants than children. That is the core Joe Biden <laughs> brand. If you are somebody who has more servants than kids and you are worth over $10 million, then you're a Biden voter. Congratulations. Your father seems to think this kind of behavior is something to be proud of. Because they're the only ones in the country that support radical crime, defunding police, open borders, and endless wars overseas. So it's not surprising that Joe Biden could raise a bunch of money from those people because that's his core constituency. I just think it's unseemly that the Biden campaign is bragging, we raised so much money from Wall Street, look at us. Our money is just as good as theirs. Yes, we get it, Joe. You've been owned by special interests for half a century. You don't need to keep telling us we understand. Stop bragging about it. In the old days, corrupt politicians at least had the dignity not to own their corruption so publicly, not to flaunt it, Jesse. <laughs> The point! I got the point! I tell you what, Puffy. Your life is in danger. Because you know the secrets. Who's involved in that little secret room you guys participating in. So, you know they're going to get you if they can. All right, you've piqued my interest. Katie, do you think Diddy's going to get subpoenaed individually pretty soon? I think the walls are absolutely closing in. This is a full scale, not just interstate, but international investigation. So clearly it's been coordinated for some time. The subpoenas for his flight records and bank records specifically named him. So he hasn't been given a target letter yet. Typically, that will come closer to when a grand jury and indictment decision would be pending. But I would anticipate they're on the, the road down that path. Interesting point. So it does seem to be a sex trafficking investigation if you look at all of the subpoenas going out to these chartered flights, even possibly commercial airlines. Tell us about these witnesses. I mean, you heard from a former bodyguard. He's willing to testify. Interesting topic of conversation. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of people in his very inner circle who have turned on him. Now, the question is whether the feds can corroborate their statements. Of course, his defense team is going to attack them for having motives to lie, making a money grab. Of course they will. But clearly, when you have so many people from so many different areas of his life and not necessarily any evidence of collusion between them, that starts to become a very weak defense. So you heard the former bodyguard say that Diddy was a snitch. You f snitch. He was talking to the FBI. He was a confidential informant. 
does that stack up to you when you read about all of these allegations that he was basically untouchable and had local law enforcement in his back pocket? I'm listening intently. Well, it does seem like the feds are late to this party. It seems like it's been known for a very long time what Diddy was involved in and what types of criminal allegations have been floating out there for years. So it wouldn't surprise me if he may have been used as an informant in some particular cases in the past. I don't know if that would have gotten him protection from all of these other allegations. But there's a but. But informants have gone down all the time. I mean, even if you're working for the cops, you're not immune from being turned on by by them at some point in the future. So the, both can be true at the same time. It's a good point. And you're also hearing about these CEOs of these record labels. I mean, these are guys that are at the highest level of the recording industry. And they're alleged to have sponsored these parties filled with underage girls, laced drinks, everything was videotaped. We're not hearing a lot about their names, but this has to probably be scaring the heck out of the entire music industry. And maybe he's right, and that scares me. Absolutely. There have been attempts to get all of the footage, all of these records. They've, we don't even know who they've interviewed up to this point. And it kind of strikes me as interesting that while we've been talking a lot about the racketeering cases or alleged racketeering cases against Trump and those defendants, this actually sounds like a legitimate racketeering case if what these people are saying are true. Okay, what's next? <laughs>